Welcome to the Pool Nation Podcast, where it's all pool talk. And we ain't talking about netting and jetting or splashing and dashing. We're talking about becoming a nation of pool pros. We talk about the latest products, trends, and training in the pool industry. Now let's welcome your host with over a decade of industry insider experience and still the reigning champion of Marco Polo, Edgar De Jesus, and his co-host, John J.J. Flawless, the fastest netter in the West, and Zach the Pool Boy Nicholas. Welcome, everyone, to the Pool Nation Live podcast. I am your host, Edgar DeJesus, and yes, I am the reigning champion of Marco Polo, along with John J.J. Flawless, the fastest netter in the West, the famous Zach, the pool boy, Nicholas, and today we are in studio with the cannonball king himself, Spider. Back in action, baby. Oh, it was so quiet. Huh? <laughs> wow. I can do that again. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> Cannonball. Hey, yeah. Yeah, now yeah. we're talking. <laughs> Today we're talking to Doreen King, a leadership development expert with over 30 years experience and instructor of the Influence and Persuasion class that's going to be held at the Pool Nation Boot Camp in McKinney, Texas. I want to welcome everyone to our live podcast, the podcast where it's all pool talk. And we ain't talking about netting or jetting or splashing and dashing. We're talking about becoming a nation of pool pros. And yes, we will talk about the latest product trends and trading in the pool industry. But before we get started today, Zach, I want to thank our visionary partners. There you go. Got it right. For this podcast, Ultimate Pool Tools, the SPPA, Blu-ray Excel, Aquastar Pool Products, Natural Chemistry, Raypack, Heritage Pool Supply, and our newest member of the family, Hayward Pool Products. We want to thank them for their continued support. Zach, good evening. Good evening. You sound a little like you're slowing down a little bit. <laughs> no. No. Really? We just had a lot of barbecue. We did. <laughs> Probably not the best idea. We did. We did. We had some amazing barbecue, Zach, by the way, just to give you a heads up. We're still eating good, even uh, though me and John are gone, huh? Yep, absolutely. You know it. And you know if it comes from Spider, it's good. Oh, from Spider. Very nice. Yeah, he dropped it. So it was good stuff. So tonight, I'm actually really excited for this one because you guys, as you know, I've been on this truck buying kick and I've been doing a lot of shopping. <laughs> so I am hoping to learn how I can effectively influence and persuade some of these car salesmen <laughs> on getting their prices down because it seems like a undoable task these days. Hey, if that happens, do we get a cut on the discount that you get? Because I think that's only fair. <laughs> We'll see. Oh, he's all, you know we'll what? see. We might have to filter the information for Zach. You're right. Yeah, let's give it a little droplet without filling out the whole thing. <laughs> so he can't take all the notes. It'll Who be but, knows? But, 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 right. Anyway. Exactly. Leanne, how are you? Good evening. I'm good. First time I've been here since Thursday. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not normally that involved, so it's a little bit of a different spin for me, but it has been fun and it's been good. It is weird not being in here with Zach and John, though, because I usually have either them or their wives or somebody in here with me. And if it makes you feel any better, Zach, John looked exhausted by the time him and Janie were ready to head back to California. So <laughs> they were wiped out. It was a lot. Yeah, I believe it. And so how's that whole thing going, Zach? Did you buy the, the truck, truck? or no? No, I'm no. still looking. Still looking. Yeah. Like I said, he I'm wants those here tonight to figure out how to get <laughs> this done. That. Got it. Got it. Absolutely. If we don't know anything about Zach, he's not impulsive. You know he's going to research the heck out of, out of it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> hey, for all of our listeners out there, so normally we talk about Brianna, we talk about Sienna, we talk about John's kids, Zach's kids, all that. But we've never talked about my nephew, Nathan. And so we brought him into studio today. Woo! Everyone, we, hello. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the interesting thing, Zach, is we were telling Doreen that we were going to put Nathan on the podcast. And she's like, he's not going to do it. And he's not going to. And we're like, yeah, he will. And she's like, no, he's not. And then it was like, Nathan, you want to be on the podcast? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty true. And, if I had asked, it would never have happened. Yeah. So Yeah, it's always different right. with the parent. And then it was like, oh, we're going to have you ask questions too. Okay. And so he's just ready to roll. So Nathan, how are you? I'm pretty good. I just came from a day of school. So Yeah. And yeah. how was school? I just sat there and listened <laughs> to class. Yeah. And yeah. Took some notes. And that's about it. Not what your yeah. mom wants to hear. Oh, sorry. I learned how to solve world hunger. <laughs> <There we go. laughs> 
<laughs> Perfect. Now we're talking. <laughs> See, I do have to tell everybody. So, Zach, in life, as your kid get older and you have all these nieces and nephews, you'll have one of them that you'll have to put your money on, right? You'll just be like, if there's one that's going to be successful, shoot, it's that one. So my money's on Nathan. So let's <laughs> give you a heads up. He's, Mine too. He's my go-to. I've already gone to Vegas. I had to get him a list of all the other nieces and nephews and give stats <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. And they gave me odds. The odds are in his favor. So I had to do two to one. But, but And we hope the other ones aren't listening right yeah, now. Yeah, don't, don't tell anyone. <laughs> don't tell anyone. Yeah, the other ones. It's a secret, guys. Yeah, right. the other ones will, will be a hard time. So. <laughs> Anyways. Doreen, how are you? I'm great, Edgar. How are you? I'm doing great. Good. We're excited to have you on. I'm trying to figure out how you got me here. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. It only took us three years in the end. I get her on here, right? But I tend to manage to get Doreen to do a lot of things that she yeah. never wants to do, and I'm just going to add this to the list. So. It's true. It's Although true. I, I did trick you this time. I didn't ask you. I had Edgar do it. <laughs> She's smart. She knows whenever there's cameras, lights in action, I run the other yeah. direction. <laughs> I love to train, love to get out there and talk about the things I'm passionate about. But lights will make me run. It's the first thing. <laughs> but no, I will say I learned everything I learned about influence and persuasion from Leanne. And so we'll talk not about true. that today. Not true. Very much true. So, <laughs> hey, before we get started, I do need to give some shout outs over here. Jaden's Pools. Look at that. Jaden's Pools. Jaden's Pools. Nathan. Oh. No. So Jaden's oh. Pools. Jaden Pool. Hi, Jaden. <laughs> there you go. Vibrant Pool Service. Aaron's Pool Service. What's going on? Mike Dunbar. Big shout out to you. Pool Fool. Splashing and dashing. Innovated Pools. What's going on? Kelly Pools. Alex, what's going on, brother? Expecting to get you out here. See you out here soon. Aquamaster Jay Breakfield. Uh, Jay yes. was just in this week. Wow. So shout out to our boy Jay he out there. He should be tired too. Yeah. He had a lot going on this yeah. week. You tired out there, Jay? Anyways, Lucas, big shout out to you. Cool Tech USA, what's going on? Eugene is on. Big shout out to nice. Eugene. Nice. Hey, Eugene. Eugene. I think Eugene is trying to influence too, Zach. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to influence. And then he goes, I am Palm Beach Plantation. I ain't talking about pools now after cleaning them all day. <laughs> but you know you're on here, right? You're watching. We got it. So innovative pools, buying trucks, Zach, in New York is insane. Total Pool and Patio, big shout out. Nate, shout out Electronics. What's going on, Mr. Mark Bravo? What's going on? And Joey Busick, the man himself, the pool assassin. What's going on? Great Shout out name. to you. And then Dave, what's going on? Appreciate it out there. Big shout out to all you guys. And now I got this all figured out. First, I had to go through my phone, which is hard. But even Michael is on here. What's going on, Michael? Big shout out to you out there. Anyways, what's up, Mr. Nathan? I think the major thing right now is going to college mm -hmm. and figuring out that whole transition from mm -hmm. high school to college. That's like a major life change, I feel like. Mm -hmm. um, We're trying to convince him it will be the best time of his life. <laughs> They're struggling. <laughs> 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 we're doing a bad job. Is that what we're doing? <laughs> we haven't convinced him yet, yeah, but him yet. it yeah. will happen. It's a work in progress. <laughs> I think that's mostly it. That's the main thing hanging over my head right now. Do you have it all figured out? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because totally. here's the expectation. <laughs> You're going to graduate. You got to have it all figured out. Yeah. As long as you got it all figured out, we're good. I'm just going right. to become famous and then infinite money. So, be fine. so here's what you do. Let me give you a little bit of advice. Okay. In that process that you're trying to become famous and figure it all out, all you have to do is just call home and ask for money. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's a money tree. Let me tell you, this is the only time in your life that you're going to get away with that. So right. if there's True. one piece of advice that I could give you is pluck the money from the tree, because once that's course, over, that course. tree is going to, you know what they're going to do? They're going to move the tree from the backyard and you can't find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got to leech while I can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're going to move it so it's only available to your sister. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, or themselves. Because you'll be all grown up. Yeah. yeah. And you don't want to do that. You always want to have that. It's like retirement. It's just yes. like a constant source of money. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That, you, you see, he's got Adolescent it all figured retirement. out. Figured out. Yeah, That's why yeah. our money's on Nathan. He's yeah. got it all figured yeah. out. So, Cause here's the problem is you've got to make all the money. Cause then what's That's probably right. going to happen is everybody else is going to come to you trying to pull from the tree. You're for listening sure, to for that, sure. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Totally, totally, you come totally. home on the holidays, we'll get you some more money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm expecting a works. very full envelope. <laughs> You're not bribing your kid to come back for the uh, holidays, are you listen, already? You're already Some people that? call it manipulation, <laughs> coercion. I tend to call it influencing for a win. There you go. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I came back. She's she did. She's that, able to circle that around. Yeah. Right. That was Unexpected. lots of practice. That was quick, right? <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, my gosh. 
Now, do you know where you're going to college yet or not yet? You're kind of working that out. I think my main three choices are UNT, Utah State University, and University of Texas at Dallas. Because Dallas. if I go to UNT or UTD, uh-huh. I can live at home and not pay a ton of money for rent. Not right? the you're college. Not you're not going to pay. I know, but pay. that's, that's, okay, the, no. that's the downside. Talking. That's the one downside is it's like, I won't like do new things. I'll just be at home. Okay. So It'll this is truly her influencing for a win-win right. already because wow. she's figured so out true. how to try yeah. to keep you at home. Okay. Exactly. Can I just tell You're, you? I'm telling you, go get that college experience. Yeah. Listen, I'm good with whatever you want, but I will say I have bribed him. So <laughs> a little bit. for those of you who don't know, Edgar has the most amazing coffee machine in his home. Oh, and Nathan my God. tends to go over to his house just to get the coffee, right? Of course a visit, but to get the coffee. I've actually said to him, if you stay home, instead of housing or tuition, I can buy that I'll coffee, buy machine, coffee you. machine. Instead of <laughs> 3000 a month, it's 3000 one time. Yeah, that's, right. that's it. I was just about to say, I'm that's a bad saying. deal for you, buddy. Yeah, it's yeah. a bad deal for you. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, big shout out to Brian and Jen. What's going on out there in Florida, Jen? Hey, guys, before we get started, I'm going to get through some housekeeping notes here. On March 1st and 2nd, we are going to be doing our boot camp out in McKinney, Texas. And Doreen is actually going to be teaching one of the classes Ooh, we're going to be talking yeah. about today. That's going to be March 1st and 2nd. And we're going to be talking about chlorine and cash flow with Eugene. Lessons and insights into pool service entrepreneurship. Hiring, understanding the hiring process with Leanne. We're going to do building your future, goal setting fundamentals, which will be Zach. Time out. What? Zach is going to get in front of a group of people and teach. <laughs> yes, he is. He just doesn't know it yet. Are okay. we medicating you? How's yeah. that going to work? I yeah. want to know. So, have you guys heard of tranquilizer darts? <laughs> I got a little warm up with the award show. Yeah, he did. He killed it, right, you know, Slater? Yeah, and he was again, great. he was no? great. That's Edgar slowly tricking him into stuff. <laughs> I will have I can to tell you. See the trend. Edgar is influencing and persuading me every single day. That's right. That's he right. does. I do have to confess for Nathan and Doreen. So Zach and I met. He was on an Instagram live. We hit it off. We asked if we wanted to be on the podcast. We decided to do the podcast. We go to do the first Pool Nation Awards, and, and Zach's all, I am not talking. I'm like, Zach. I'm just going to have you manage the computer and you can manage the screen. All you have to do is press play for the video and stuff like that. And he agreed to that. So once we got him warm around that, I said, what if you come and you stand on the stage with us? <laughs> Baby and steps. Then, exactly what and then did. you could say a little something. And he's like, I don't have to say anything. No, you just need to hand the trophies over and that's sure. all you have to do. <laughs> and then when we got him warm with that, then we said, hey, can you say a couple words at the beginning? We'll have a confidence monitor. And then this year he hosted the Pool Nation Awards all by himself. See, this is how they worked, Zach. I'm saying. Yeah. 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 So maybe Edgar needs to teach the influencing, or is it trickery? <laughs> I was say. Maybe it's a trickery, trickery. class that we need to. <laughs> yeah. Manipulation and trickery. There you Edgar. go. There you go. That's, that's, the, that's what we'll call what it. What to avoid to do section yeah, right. that we're going to talk about at the yeah. session. <laughs> it's the think, what not to do. Right. I, I think Doreen is just a lot smoother than I am. <laughs> I don't, uh, you know. So, anyways, and then Doreen is going to do influence and persuasion. We're super excited about that. She's going to talk about all the different steps of persuasion, influence. We're going to do a deep dive into that. Today, registration is open. If you want to go to poolnation.com, there's a button there. You can register. Please note it that tickets are limited. We can only hold about 80 people. So go ahead and register. We will be at the Western Pool and Spa Show March 26th, 27th. We'll be doing another boot camp out there. Registration for that is open as well. You can go to poolnation.com or the Western Pool and Spa Show.com. May 17th, we'll be in Oxnard, California. We're going to be doing a 201 Raypack heater class at the Raypack headquarters in Oxnard, California. And then November 9th, 10th, and 11th, we'll be at the PSP Expo in Dallas, Texas. Anyways, for more information, you can go to the website. You can send us a message on Instagram or you can hit us up on any social media or email and we'd be glad to answer any questions. Zach, you ready to get this party started? I am, but I think Spider needs to dig back there and find you like a Celsius or a bang or, like a fire <laughs> or something. Uh, there, there was one. It is in my belly now. <laughs> Spider, do I sound that bad? Do you no, have my... No. no. Is he just messing with right. me? You're all right. Okay. You're, you're sluggish. You're not on your game. I'm also sluggish, so I might be hearing you <laughs> yeah, through the, the same, same channels because yeah, we yeah. ate. Yeah. <laughs> all right. If the three of us have to take this over, we're in we big can. trouble. We're in big trouble, yeah. y'all. I don't know. So, so don't just know. to let you know, Spider and I were done, so we're like, let's go. So we went to go get some barbecue, Zach, which we'll have to take you to. It was really good. Really, really good. 
Okay, I haven't had so, dinner, so just so stop the, the right. conversation. The burnt right ends there. were yeah. amazing. Fantastic. Phenomenal. Yeah, Anyways, so Zach, if you're making fun of me, you want to start the podcast or no? <laughs> I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> so Doreen, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, happy to. So I'm Doreen King. I'm the Senior Learning Manager at JCPenney, and I'm in charge of all learning and development. I've been there about 11 years. Prior to joining JCPenney, I was with Hilton Worldwide for 24 years, and that's where I met Leanne. And so I'm going to tell that story a little bit later because it's one of my favorites. <laughs> a little bit about myself. My husband and I have, gosh, we have been married 30 years this last week. That's we just insane. celebrated our wedding that. anniversary. We're you guys rookies. are old. We're rookies. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Who invited him to the show? That's what I want to know. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's a I'm natural, filtered. by the way. I'm just going to say. You know what's old? Old, old is 37 years together. So we met when we were his age. If that just gives okay. you any Wow. Of what that's that sounds like. like a really weird way yeah. to think of that. Yeah. I'm just saying. I agree. So raising two beautiful children, Nathan, 18, in high school, like you said, looking on to college. And then our daughter is in middle school. She's 12, almost 13. She's at the age where they know everything. She's going on 25. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> yep. Absolutely nothing. Yep. That middle school age is fun, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. For not her. For yeah, not for us. <laughs> I had Listen, two of those. Don't forget. I so say we're living the dream. We adopted both of our kids. So we're living the dream and just happy to be here. That is awesome. Hey, big shout out to our boy Stan over here. Hey, guys. Good to see you. Michelle out in California. Pool guy Howard. Brianna's on here, too. Hi, Brianna. Hi, Bri Bri. And she's saying hi, Aunt Doreen. Hi, Bri Bri. Uh, <laughs> coastal Cactus Pools. Nothing for Cousin Nathan. Common no. Ken. Big shout out to everybody out there. Yeah, he did. Zach, we always get the hi, John, but never hi, Edgar. <laughs> I know, right? Hi, so. Zach is always the least thrown around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, people will say hi to me only because I bash them and make fun of them. Right. So then they feel like it. But nobody ever says hi to Aww. Zach. Oh. Right? Hi, Zach. Zach. Let's give love to Jack. <laughs> hi, Zach. <laughs> Could be my night stalkerish vibe. Doreen, we're going to get into a lot of great questions, but before we get started, I wanted to see if you could give us a quick overview of the class you're going to be teaching at the Pool Nation Business Boot Camp on March 1st and 2nd, what that's going to be all about. Yeah, I'd be happy to. So we're really going to dive into the conversation around influence and persuasion. And first, before we, we dive into it, we're going to talk a little bit about the value of influence, using it for good, not evil. <laughs> I think so many times, you know, you think of the car, speaking of Zach, you think of the used car salesman, right? We're there to coerce you or manipulate you into doing something I want. Influence and persuasion is about getting a win-win outcome. And so we'll talk about that value first. And then we're going to dive into the six principles of persuasion. So there's a whole science behind persuading people. And it comes from Dr. Robert Cialdani, who is really the expert around this field of persuasions. We'll talk about things like reciprocity, scarcity. What do you do with authority if you have informal authority? We'll talk a little bit about consistency there, Nathan. To keep you engaged. <laughs> Wait, what? Liking. Wait, what are, you, what are you saying? Liking and just social consensus. Those are the six principles that we're really diving into. So that's just one part of it. Then we're going to dive into the art of influence. When you think about the art of influence, it's really going to be, Zach, focusing on building and establishing credibility first. I think that's the most important thing people have to understand is it is not about... He's taking notes there, guys. Hey, Leon, look he's at, like, Zach's like, taking notes. All right. I said this before we got started, you got Zach. Pen and paper. You have a job to do, and it's okay to write a few things down, but just don't lose track about the fact that you're here to do a job. She's going to have a ton of great nuggets. That's write right. them down, but still stay focused on but the But I'm still going to dangle that carrot so they want to come to the oh, session, yeah, right? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. He wants that car, guys. That's right. Right, he does. He's got to get that right price for that car. But when you think about the art of influence, it's all about first it starts with you earning and establishing that credibility it's all about self-trust right so when we talk about trust people come at trust two different ways they either give it willingly right and then if somebody crosses you wrong then they take it back and they probably don't give it back to you freely or you're one of those people Nathan, that has to earn trust over time. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I think Nathan's okay. a perfect example of, listen, I'll trust you once you prove that you're trustworthy and it's going to take time to get there. And when you, once you get there, you've got it for life. That's like how you come at trust two different ways. We did say he was a smart kid. He's a smart kid. See? Yeah. I, listen, I always say that I want to be just like Nathan when I grow up. I say it all the time. <laughs> don't I? Don't I not say that? A little too much. <laughs> <laughs> Who spider, spider, do you show? have some gunshots sound? I know, there? right? Yes. There's shots fired. Shot fired out here. Yeah. Like, okay. 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 I have a friend. Oh, shots fired. Oh, geez. <laughs> I have a friend who doesn't understand that reference at all. I'm like, it's shots fired, like insulting someone, but it's it just goes right over their head. So I'm glad you understand that. That's I love awesome. it. I love it. And then 
Part of the art there, Zach, just to get back to the topic here, is really about not just (laughs) self-trust, but it's about building relationship trust, right? So how do you build relationship trust and credibility? There's 13 behaviors of trust through Stephen Covey's uh, work that we're going to talk about. And then finally, what I think is most exciting is you take the concept of this influence and persuasion conversation, and what we're going to do is dive into mapping out a strategy. So I look at influence and persuasion as one of the best skill sets that a leader or a business owner can have. And it's truly because it's going to be something you can learn, something you can actually get good at through practice. And I think if you map out a strategy, you can find that it's really going to come out really well for you in the business world. So And apply. Oh, yeah. I'm, did you have something before? I yeah. And, and I think that's something that you can apply across mm-hmm. everything, right? It doesn't everything. have to be a, a leader or a business owner. It's yeah. just anybody. It's a skill set in life, right? Yeah. That's how you manage everything in the household, right? The only way I manage. Like, you're on to her though, right, Nathan? A little bit. Like you see this. You just she now does figure it out after 18 years how this works. Bit. Okay. I'm getting snippets of her lessons. I'm, I'm using them on her. I'm just waiting <laughs> for him to go, oh man, she just, yeah. he's going he's gonna to pick up all the nuggets. Of so I'm going to ask a question because I know it's going to come up because this comes up a lot when Doreen and I are interacting with other people. Okay. So Doreen, tell us how you got involved in this line of work. (laughs) (laughs) That is a funny story. So I was working for Hilton Worldwide for 24 years and about year 17, I was in the operation side of the business. I was front office operations, reservations, in charge of quality assurance. So I really had a passion for driving results. And there I was, had just adopted a child, Nathan, that's you. And right. I'm on maternity leave, so just keep that in mind. And I get this phone call from Leanne Nix, director of HR, who says, hey, Doreen, listen, I know you're coming back to work soon. And FYI, I have a new idea. And that idea is, wouldn't it be great if we brought somebody in from the operations side of the business into HR so yeah. they can train for results, those business results? And I thought, wow, that sounds like a really fantastic idea, Leanne. You should do it. And she said, great, we're looking at you. <laughs> So needless to say, all the good stuff. (laughs) Needless to say, Zach, I was pulled to the dark side of HR (laughs) by this woman over here who said, wouldn't be great to come in and train. And I said, no, I think seven times, right, Leanne? At least seven times. I said, oh, I think it's a great idea. I think you should do it, but I'm not your person. So as soon as that happened, Leanne found an opportunity, the first one. And Leanne, why don't you tell them what you did to influence me? Through other people. I'm not sure what you might be referring to, but we might have gone to a charity event and we were painting houses Mm -hmm. and I might have spoken to your husband about how nice that would be for you not to have to work nights and weekends and holidays. Now that you have a new baby, you could work Monday through Friday, <laughs> day shifts, have holidays off. Exactly right. That he, is smooth. He was. It feels he more was, like manipulation. He, I know. It, a little it bit was. did. And yeah. he was sold. And if I wasn't going to get him there, I was going to go for the twin sister. Yep. You tried that because too. Because the twin sister has the whole hotel background too. And she understands that, wow, new baby, you're right. That would be better to not have to work nights and weekends and holidays. Yeah. It worked. It was great. And she did it smooth. Influence. Yeah. And so over and over again in my career with Leanne, I've always said no, and somehow she's always been right. So that's my big thing with her. No, I think it was the right decision. Uh, For me, I was able to get in, learn new skill sets, take a risk. And at the end of the day, I love what I do 18 years later. And I'm so glad that she influenced me for the positive. So she thanks, uses Leanne. you for the math. She knows now that she's been in the, <laughs> the dark side way. of HR because you're 18. It's been well, 18 listen, years. I am on the fun <laughs> side of HR. I'm in training and development. I'm not in your world totally. So yeah. you only drug me halfway there. Yeah, she That's hasn't true. regretted it for a single moment. She <laughs> loved right. it did every she, second. Did she pay it. you to say that? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I don't quite believe yeah. That's probably true. That's but fun. I was able to also convince her to come to Texas and, That's I was, right. and to come to JCPenney. And yeah, so I just drag her along when she least expects so it. So I owe my whole life to Leanne Nix. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. So I have two takeaways from that. <laughs> <laughs> Do tell, Zach. So yes. It's not just Edgar that <laughs> no. have an idea. Oh. No. Oh, yeah. Here would be the shots fired, Spider. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say no, right? Oh my gosh, he just nailed it. I can't say no. That's it. I say no, and every time I do, I somehow come back. Right? But you know yep. what, Zach? Let me back my truck up here for a moment. <laughs> have you regretted it at one moment? Not no, one day. One, not one day. Not that's, one that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, I know Nathan has a question here, but I want to do a couple more shout outs over here. Maria from Ensenada Pools, what's going on? Jordan Knorr is asking University of Texas, but it's University of Texas, but Dallas, right? Yeah. 
So there's University of Texas at Austin、uh-huh. and University of Texas at Dallas. Those are the two main campuses.、Uh-huh. Austin is a little bit older.、Uh-huh. Dallas is more like contemporary and for kids, I feel. Or like prospective people. Yeah. Modern your vibe. STEM. I, yeah. It felt like old, you know? <laughs> I'm sure it's a great school and all, but. Why did you、fun. say old and look at Zach? <laughs>、uh, no reason at all. No, reason. Now, let me ask you because we haven't talked about it. What do you want to study? I was thinking physics for a long time and I still am. But I have an open mind. I'll say that much. Okay. Yeah. So that means that you might change. Okay. He could. I mean,、change. pools seem like a pretty cool. <laughs> <you know. laughs> We can save you a lot of money. You don't need to go to college. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Pestering stabs me under the table. Don't s a y that. Watch it. Watch it. No. She'll be right again. So the <laughs> University of Texas is Dallas. Is that the one with the hook 'em? The hook 'em? No. 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 I don't think no. so. What's that? Your daughter is online. And she's going to be mad. I know. Somebody said over here. So, all I know is I'm supposed to do this horns down horns thing. Down. <laughs> is all I know I'm supposed to do. And I can't wear the color of、yeah. that. Right. And I have a shirt that color, and she gets mad at me when、right. I wear it. I、so. can see that. Anyways, Tori's on here. Big shout out to Tori. Joel Tonson, you guys got to make your way up to NorCal. Yes, we will. We got to make it up there. And then he says, I'm sorry, every time I hear the name Spider, I always think Spider from School of Rock. Spider. <laughs> that far off. He gives me that vibe. He gives you that vibe.、Yeah. And big congratulations to Jordan Knorr out in Las Vegas. He's doing awesome. Just picked up a second work truck today, getting ooh, ready to pick ooh, up a bunch of pulls this year. So big shout out to our boy Jordan out there. And then big shout out. So is it Nathan's turn? Nathan's turn. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Why are your influence and persuasion critical skills so effective for leadership? Like, why do you need them? Oh my gosh, that's a good question. All right. So, when I think about influence and persuasion, it's actually influence is power. And when you think about it, it's about making sure that you find win outcomes in the end. You're not looking to persuade somebody your way of thinking. In fact, it takes tremendous active listening skills. In order to really empathize with somebody, to have strong emotional intelligence, you really need to be able to do all those things. I think there's people with high IQ, but if you don't have really high emotional intelligence to be able to actively listen, to empathize, to collaborate with others, you're not going to drive the results you want. So、right. it's really easy to get blindsided by very not consider、so. other people. Influencing skills really is allowed the ability to be able to change behavior, change a new way of thinking, to be innovative, creative, do things like you've never done before. And unless you're willing to gain new perspectives from others, I think what's really important to understand about influence is it's not just a one and done event. It's a journey to get there. If you walk in and think, this is my way and the only way, I'm going to give you a good sales pitch, and you don't actually step back and consider. Their perspectives, their point of view, the audience that you're, you're speaking to, then you're not going to get the result you want in the end、mm. of the day.、Mm. I'll give Zach one second to catch up. I was going to say, Zach. <laughs>、oh, no, he's, he's good now. He's good now. <laughs> you beat me to it, Nathan. I'm like, Zach, did you、I、get was, all that? I was waiting for the pause. I was waiting for the pause. <laughs> Zach, I'll give you a cliff note version, okay? <laughs> send him the I、file. talk fast. <laughs> She'll send you a PowerPoint with. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I will with all、Perfect. my notes. Yeah. <laughs> so, can influence and persuasion be taught, or are they innate skills? When you think about it, it's both, right? But for the most part, it absolutely could be taught. And the reason I say that is you can have someone who's innately just good at effective communication and be able to have those skill sets of influencing someone, listening to someone. But if you don't actually do it in the right way, you're not going to get the outcome. So I think it could absolutely be taught. It's a skill that over time just takes practice, takes skill. Takes strong capabilities, but it's something that Leanne, I think you just have naturally <laughs> knowing you. But something that I see all the time with people, HR business partners, for example, in our business, have to understand what the sides of the business are. In order to do that, they have to be able to use effective communication. I'm trying to think about things, you know, give good feedback, understand the whole picture of the business. So you can be taught or learned over time. Well, and it's one of those things, and I've、mm-hmm. said this to Zach, is going back to when Zach didn't like doing interviewing or getting into difficult conversations. It's one of those muscles that the more you build that muscle, the easier it is to do, right? It's a skill set. And the more you use it and the more you apply it, the easier it is to do. And Zach actually admitted last week, now he's at the point where he actually enjoys the hiring process, he enjoys the interviewing. When he used to just, I think it kept him up at night. So now he's built that skill. Yeah. And it's the same thing. It's like a lot of these leadership skills that you learn along the way, the more you use them, the more you apply them, you build that muscle and it 
And it becomes memory muscle and you just get good at it. Yeah. And it is skill. I think the best way I can actually say this is as you develop over time, you gain knowledge, which is 10% of structured learning. At 20%, you're actually out there practicing and you're actually getting coaching and you're getting feedback and you're adjusting and modifying to get better. But 70% of everything we do, we learn through experiences, right? So I want you to think about getting your driver's license for the very first time. Nathan just got his a couple years ago and I remember telling him, you don't just get in a car, watch your parents drive for 17 years and start driving. You have to actually gain the knowledge, then get tested, then get coached. And then go out there in the real world and try over again. So that's what influencing and persuasion is needed to do is practice. The same happened for presenting in school, I feel like. Yeah. Because I used to be very, I didn't want to do it ever, but I did it a few times and I actually started looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. Because like I got to look forward to like, how can I do it better than I did it last time, right? That's a great example. Really good example. Yeah. And that's crazy. So 10% like a classroom like learned. And then 20% is what? Coaching and feedback. It's actually going out there, trying the skills, Uh failing, learning from. The learner's permit of driving. Uh (laughs) So yeah, I think about it. Really that 10% is that classroom training or reading a book, right? Right. You don't want to spend the money anymore in education. So we say, take an online class. Mm -hmm. You're only actually retaining five or 10% of that information. I ask you, so if you were going to be somebody who got an A plus in school, does that mean you're necessarily a great driver? Are you skilled at the skill? No, but you could be a D minus grade point average for the class, but be a terrific driver because that connection of knowledge and skill has to be actually practiced Mm -hmm. over time. So 10% is just any structured learning, 20% practice learner permit with a subject matter expert in the car next to you, hopefully in the seat next to you, (laughs) coaching you. Several accidents later. Right. (laughs) And then just think about when you get in a car, you didn't get on the freeway the first time. You were in an open parking lot that was safe Uh and secure. You can make mistakes, but actually learn from them. And then 70% is experiential, stretching you to do something you just aren't comfortable with. Zach. That so applies to what we do, right, Zach? Totally, Zach. (laughs) The more you get forced to do it. The better you got. Right. Yeah. I got to flip that from 70% preparation <laughs> in the classroom to actually getting out there and doing it. Yeah. That's yeah. it. But uh, think about it, Zach, even for us, for pool pros, right? Like most of our learning comes from getting out and repairing mm-hmm. things right. and doing things. And that's where the majority of it comes from. But I didn't know it was that high. Yeah. I mean, that's insane. Yeah. It's, it's true, too, when you think about it. Anything you learn, you didn't learn in the classroom. You learn mm-hmm. through experiences and being stretched. And I would say the, the golden part of that is being vulnerable. We learn best when we are most vulnerable. That's when we grow. It's probably a little different for everyone, too, though. I'm sure there's some people who are better at learning in lecture, Mm -hmm. say in class versus actually doing something in class. But I think that's definitely a common sentiment is the more you do something, the better you get at it. Because you don't meet any super professional pool professional. I said professional twice. That knows everything (laughs) without actually doing any of the pool stuff, right? Yeah. They have to actually know how to do it. It's way and different than, do- than like reading a book on how to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very much. Or yeah. watching a podcast on how to do it. <laughs> you watch no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. They learn a lot. Watching, watching, watching the Pool Nation podcast. <laughs> but I just only. figured out that they only retain 10% of what we say. <laughs> that's <laughs> actually, <laughs> that's what you're taking. She actually right. said 5%. So I'm, yeah, Zach, we got to do some work here, buddy. Yeah. So. Call to action. You got, no, you got visuals. You got Spider in there <laughs> making all the jokes. I love it. He's working <laughs> up. You got the youngster. Yeah. In the youngster, yeah. The newbie. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I feel like, Nathan, this isn't your first time. I just want to know where you've been hiding out doing podcasts. I don't know. I want to know where you've been hiding out doing podcasts. Zach, I think we're going to have a new co-host. The newbie? Yeah, the newbie. The newbie. Hey, hey, the newbie. Watch your language. (laughs) Let's throw him out to do a pull or two and the newbie has joined. (laughs) There you go. So, Dorian, I want to ask, how do you address the ethical implications of using influence and persuasion? Yeah, I think that's a really important one. When you think about what it's not manipulation, it's not coercion, it's not bribery. Sorry, Leanne. (laughs) It's not really. It's all about making sure that you do the right thing when no one's looking. So we talk about in the class, the four cores of credibility and the four cores of credibility are really your character first and foremost and your competence. And so when you think about those four cores, those are the two main points. But the two main points within the four cores, you've got your integrity, That's what you're willing to do when no one else is going to look. So think about when you get pulled over by a cop. And what's the first question they usually ask you if you get pulled over? Do you know why I pulled you over? Yeah. And what do we say? We have no idea. We do know. We have about five (laughs) things they could have pulled us over for, but we're not going to say it right. Uh Integrity is all about doing the right thing the first time without anyone looking. 
And it's covered up. When you think about like a, almost like the metaphor of a tree, that's what I think about. That's the image is that underneath the soil, the roots, the foundation is where you have your integrity. And then just above ground is your intent. And so integrity and intent really focus on your character. But does everybody always know your intent? That's my no. question. No. You have to actually. We get asked that all the time. Even <laughs> now, after what three years. <laughs> yeah. Right, Zach? In the industry, what's people are always like, what's your, what's, what's your motive? Yeah, what's your motive? We yeah. don't actually tell people what our intention is. So I think it's imp- about practicing. Let me give you my intention for why I want to have the situation influenced or persuaded in any way. So then when you go up into the leaves of the tree, that's your competence. So number one is capability. That's You can see the people's capability, their skill, their knowledge, their ability, whether they're smart, book smart, or street smart. So that's obvious to everybody. But at the end of the day, at the top of the tree is the results. All that capability you have, what results are you deriving from it? When you think about the four cores of credibility, it's all about trust. And so I love Warren Buffett has a really great quote. It says, trust is like the air we breathe. When it's present, nobody really notices. When it's not, you do. Because you die. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So ethical, when you think about this, doing the right thing, because that's the right thing to do when no one's looking, making sure you have your credibility intact, you establish that credibility. And so that means you have to be transparent in your communication. You have to be vulnerable, ask questions, not always be the one that's right. Learn from others, be a continuous learner. That's really the bottom line of integrity for building the credibility that you need for. What was the question, Zach? I forgot. <laughs> Ethical <laughs> implications. Ethical yeah. implications. I think, Liam, though, you can speak to this on so many occasions from an HR perspective. Yeah. And yeah. we do that a lot. It's funny because when you talk about intent, a lot of times people assume negative intent. And we get a lot better results when we convince people, why don't you assume positive intent when you're addressing a situation or trying to have an interaction with somebody? If you go into it assuming positive intent, then your outcome is a lot more on the positive side either. But if you're already assuming that they've got this negative intent, you're going at it ready to fight and ready Mm -hmm. to defend. And if you're already on the defensive and so forth. So yeah, we do that. So what are some strategies or effective strategies for developing influence and persuasion skills in addition to the six principles of persuasion? Okay. So when you think about influence, you got to think about that you have to build really solid relationships and relationships aren't built just in an instant, right? It's over time. So building really solid relationships will help you to be able to go and ask somebody for some sort of uh, a favor or for you to be able to have the conversation to begin with. So building relationships is another one. Number one, demonstrating that character and competence, which I talked about, making sure that you're collaborating with others, establishing that credibility. And then also there's 13 high trust behaviors that you can build in order to establish credibility with others and to build trust that's sustainable. There's 13 behaviors. We're actually going to dive into that in deep detail in the actual session because you have to understand what those 13 behaviors are in order to emulate them. I'm sure one of them is manipulation, right? It's not. (laughs) But good try. (laughs) See, maybe you should be taking notes and Zach should be paying attention. (laughs) So let me ask you, Dorian, when you do this session, though, because I already know that Zach's brain is blowing up. But I'm sure. Just to let you know, mine is blowing up, too. I'm like completely enamored into this conversation. Yeah, so I know that people's brain is blowing up, but because I know her and I'll just let everybody know. A lot of times I'll have a conflict with a situation, whether it's a leadership skill that I need to tap into or something that we need to help somebody develop on or whatever. And when I've run out of ideas, I usually call Doreen or I'll tell other people, call Doreen and ask her to dip into her Mary Poppins bag of trucks. That's right. right? Right. Because there's a lot of things that she pulls out of this bag that I know of. And then all of a sudden she keeps pulling stuff out that I've never heard of or seen. So she's always got this Mary Poppins bag of tricks. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing what she can come up with when she does that. But I'm assuming we've got minds blowing already going, oh, my God, I can't keep track of this. Zach's probably run out of paper. When you do the session, you're going to have something that they can reflect back on. They can take notes. They can actually refer back when they get back because you and I talk about this all the time. We never train to just check a box saying, never. Doop, done. We always want people to be able to take what we teach them, go back, apply it, 
apply it, apply it, apply it and build that muscle, mm-hmm, right? So mm-hmm. that you're going to arm them with things, I'm assuming that they can use when they get back. Yeah, we actually have our participant guide. So you can have a takeaway of everything that we cover. When I think about those strategies, it's really four parts. It's really establishing your credibility. It's making sure that you have a desired outcome that you want to get. It's making sure. So when we actually do the participant guide, there'll be a form fillables that you walk away with. We'll have those 13 high trust behaviors you'll actually talk about, relate to, identify an area of strength you have, an area that you don't have that you want to work on. And then you'll take that information and put it into a trust action plan. Perfect. And you'll walk away with a one pager of what's an outcome I want, what, how will I actually implement this, and then you can actually immediately start implementing it. Oh, I can build mm-hmm. your strategy. Yeah. yeah. You're giving them what they need to get their permit. Is a simple way of, pu- <laughs> it's a of putting simple it. Way of putting and it. ultimately yeah. the driver's license, yeah. right? Yeah. One, one, yeah. Day, one day. <laughs> one day, one day. They can do it, yeah. I believe. What are some common mistakes that leaders make when they're trying to influence or persuade others? I think going for the hard sell is the number one thing I see often. You go in there for the sales pitch. With that sales pitch, you don't have any flexibility to compromise. And so a number two thing would be that you have to be able to compromise and not be willing. Don't die on that mountain. Make sure that you can flex. Have an EQ. Right, you need the EQ. Wow, you, you must live e- with He's your listening king. to me. Yes. Wow. It's sinking in, Leanne. Oh my God. All must, these I know it. I know it. <laughs> I know it. That's crazy. But Dory, when you say that, it t- sounds to me like they're going for the quick fix too, right? They it's are. A, hard sell is a quick fix. It's not building that strategy, building that plan. Mm-hmm. It's going in for the quick fix. And yeah. that's not, Zach, when we're looking at the truck situation, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> build a strategy. And build a relationship, right? And build that relationship. Yeah, you got to build that relationship right. to get the best deal possible, yeah. right? I was thinking that car salesman I talked to today needs to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's what the issue is with the car salesman, right? They're always going in for the one moment, that single argument. They're trying to convince you. And at the end of the day, they want what they want. They really don't want what's best for you. And you got to find that relationship that wants the win-win outcome for both of you. Yeah. But that's pretty bad if you think about it because yeah. it creates such a bad aura that everybody always jokes around. What are you, a used car salesman? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right? It's a stereotype, yeah. right? It's a stereotype. That people can relate yeah. to because they've seen it over and over again. And I don't want to get into this, but politics is another situation that you <laughs> mm-hmm. see. We don't want to get into everyone, it. Either. Everyone run. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but that's right. You see yeah. someone trying to persuade you into their way of thinking. And here's the other thing that I started thinking about, Zach, because of course my head always going into the backyard and into the pool, right? Mm-hmm. But how many times have we walked? walked into a backyard of a customer to instead of trying to influence them, we just go with the mentality because everything's so expensive in the backyard, Zach, that you know that when you go to talk to the customer, it's going to be a shock factor to them. But we automatically just go in with that approach, that you salesman approach. Not everybody. Okay. So I don't want everybody to get mad at me and go, I don't do that. (laughs) But how many times did we do? I did it a lot, right? Rather than going in and trying to influence the customer and gain the trust and gain all that to be able to to do that sale. That's what we've been really talking about lately is coming out of COVID and how we've got to go back to actually selling our credibility or establishing our credibility and the reason for whatever rate we're charging, the reason why they should pick us. And I think that we lost a lot of that through COVID because it was like John says, there weren't a lot of options. It was just, yeah, get me on route. Let's get going. Now we're really going to have to go back to having that strategy of establishing credibility, setting the expectations and so on and so forth. Yeah, I think it's important to also to note that you need to find common ground. That's critical in the strategy, right? Finding the common ground to make sure that at the end of the day, you ask more questions than you you speak, right? You listen more than you talk. But finding that common ground is critical. Number two, I think on top of that, it is also about making sure that you understand your audience. What do you want out of this car? What are you looking for? More, those questions should be coming at you more than you're talking at them or them talking at you. So it should be more more the asking of the questions rather than... This is what you will pay. Yeah. You could approach it from the perspective of a, a suburban inhabitant. Because <laughs> you, you have a house, right? You have a pool. Yeah. Well, how would you react if somebody... Did that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Only a possible. smart kid would say suburban and I, I had no right. other word. I'm right. just saying. Right. Again, uh, when, suburban you guys, dweller. when you wonder why our money's on Nathan, I'm yeah. just, I'm yeah. just <laughs> saying. Point proven right there. Right. So, right. yeah. As a house owner, better. that's better. <laughs> but, you know, you're making up a really good point, though, too, Edgar, when you talk about how much money is in the backyard. It's also about making sure that you're you're really proposing and influencing with a balance of substance and style. 
Like, here's something I can offer you, but then here's how much it's making me it's going to cost. And therefore, let's find out why this is going to be important for you more than it is for me to sell something. So yeah. it's really about balancing the data and the money with the actual emotional connection that you've already established. Mm-hmm. Rather than just going for the hard sell. Get this one, it's $10,000. Right, right, exactly. Rather than, yeah. what are your problems? What product do I have that can fix that problem? And maybe compromise, right? It's not the $10,000 product, but really the one that you need is 5000 but you create that credibility as well because you're not trying to Correct. sell you that 10000 Yeah. If John was here, he was be go- he'd be going nuts. <laughs> oh, yeah. He'd be going nuts because he talks about that all the time. Yeah. I guess one thing I think is really critical is also making sure you go with the plan. You never wing it. You never walk in and say, let me just wing this the sales pitch. It really is about making sure you have a plan. And think about today. We have to be able to communicate with people through story. Mm-hmm. The power of storytelling is critical when it comes to influencing and persuading. I want to think about the people who are just communicating via online for a minute with digital. Mm-hmm. I think about even just 10 years ago, you had at least 30 seconds to captivate someone's attention. Mm-hmm. How much time do you guys think it takes to captivate somebody today? With all the technology coming at oh us, my gosh. all the information flooding our direction. Nathan? How old is the person you're captivating? <laughs> you That's a great question. That's a really That's good question. That's a great question. Yeah. It varies a lot. But let me tell you, and it's weird because even I find myself, right? And I'm one of the older guys, okay? So <laughs> he knows. But <laughs> I find myself with a very short span. Right. And I'm like, get to your point and get to it quickly. Even though there could be a great title that I know that by the end of that story, they're going to answer that question. Right. If you don't start to address that within the first 10, 15 seconds, Mm -hmm. right, as to Mm -hmm. why I'm listening that, I'm moving on. I'm done. Somebody else is going to give me that. Okay. There's been times when Edgar gets frustrated because he's watching a TikTok. (laughs) He's like, there's 10 seconds I'll never get back. (laughs) It was 10 second TikTok. The average attention span is eight seconds. Eight seconds. Oh my God, that's that's too long. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Proof Ten positive. Too yeah. long. Yeah. It's a global thing. Yeah, it is. It <laughs> that is. is. Yeah. Proof positive. Completely. So Brianna's going, where did Nathan come from? <laughs> well, I have a house. <laughs> in the suburban or, what? Uh, inhabitant. Something. Yeah. <laughs> He's or, a suburban guess, inhabitant. Yeah, my mom, not my, by choice. My but. mom has a house. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. <laughs> Anyways, now let me ask you this. Can you share maybe a story where influence and persuasion played a critical role? And maybe a leadership success or a failure. I always or like, a failure. I always like the both. failures. Those are more fun. Yeah. Those are more fun. I can are they all right? I'm with you, Nathan. <laughs> oh my gosh! I'll just share again. Going back to it's a journey. So much passion around what I did for training and development that I wanted everybody just to jump onto board as quickly as possible and get things done. I learned how to stop and actually go on with the plan in order to get people to actually sign up for our classes and understand the value that we can add. I had to put together an L and D strategy, and that L and D strategy was encompassing of three months of benchmarking, <laughs> which I didn't want to do. I just want to get in there and train in a training class. But it was about benchmarking to find out what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, what more we can do. So I really put the brakes on executing a strategy and backing up to make sure it was a, the right strategy tied to the vision, the values, the morals of the company. And then I had to go and present that and then iterate it over time. And then eventually, once the strategy was locked in, I had a boss who said, in this case, it wasn't you, Leanne, for a change, right? (laughs) Who said, I I think the strategy is right. But have you ever thought about what it looks like to create the story from start to finish? Someone comes in the organization as a brand new leader, never had experience before. What does their journey look like all the way to an executive CEO? Can you map that out for us in a simple one page infographic? I was like, are you kidding me? I've got to, now I've got to do more work. doesn't fit on one work. page. Does yeah. it? doesn't yeah. fit on one page. If you write small. <laughs> In a perfect scenario, could you do that? So I had to sit back one more time and I actually put this infographic together about what leadership looks like with learning journeys at every level. And that work honestly was, I think, the most rewarding because now I can tell the story three years later and it's still sustainable. So I went out and did road shows with anyone I could find in the organization to say, give me 45 minutes so I can tell you the story. And they're like, are you sure you want 45? Do you need 45 minutes? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I'm like, just give me the 45 minutes. I promise it's valued time. And every single time I end that road show, they want another 90 minutes from me. And then my, my actual classes started selling out to the point where I have 180 people on average in my classes. And so doing that work, I think, to influence through the storytelling, through how we get there, what I could do for them. We ended up having a really mighty and small team, but we get more accomplished that way. Yeah. Now my failures... 
Okay, that's a big one. That's a hard. You one. can tell you somebody else's. <laughs> yeah, I have, now Nathan's I have, like, now I'm writing this stuff Na- down. Nathan failed I his driving where test did, where three did times. She fail? I want to hear it. I want to hear it. You no, know, I had a leader and that was tough recently, actually, last year. And the way I would do it normally, I didn't get the outcome I wanted. And so I ended up trying everything in my power with full control freak like I am to try to get this <laughs> accomplished, right? And I still couldn't get this person on board. And every time I tried, I would go around, up, over, and I just couldn't, I couldn't lock it in. So I went back and I scrubbed my notes around building 13 high behavioral trust examples with this person. And I just started to have many moments that I could, that I can actually start building the relationship. And over time, if I couldn't get straight to her, then I went around and found somebody else to, in a meeting, influence what I needed to get done. And through that person, I found 10 minutes on her calendar. And I planned that approach for that 10 minutes to be clear, concise, exactly what I needed to start establishing my credibility. Uh, And every moment I could do that, I did for about a year. And I knew I actually influenced her when she said yes for me to facilitate this major senior leadership meeting. And as soon as I was done, I went back up to her and said, I need to make a change next week. I want to make sure I get your approval. And she said, you know what? I trust you. Do whatever you need. And so from that moment on, and now I've been hearing stories like, yeah, you have a new fan, Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. It's because just over time about that relationship. That took a year. I don't have that kind of patience. Took a year. So, so this is where Dorian and I can compliment each other. It's like, <laughs> there are definite skill sets and characteristics I do not possess. And so I lean into her for that. And yeah. <laughs> it was and tough though, but it's a, a win. It's yeah, a win. It's a win. And we've, and that person's been out there with all the people I, I didn't even have contact with singing our praises of what we can do. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. That is absolutely crazy. Hey guys, let's do this. Let's take a word from our sponsors when we come back. We will continue. The Hyper Pole from Ultimate Pool Tools is a pool care pole designed by pool professionals for pool professionals, featuring precision crafted carbon fiber and stainless steel construction. Go to ultimatepooltools.com or Instagram at Ultimate Pool Tools. Pool pros have specific needs when it comes to general liability insurance. The SPPA program has you covered. With three tailored and customizable general liability options, SPPA makes it easy for pool pros to feel secure. Find out more and get covered at the SPPA.com. Now available, Pool Invoice. Pool Invoice is a pool billing software created specifically for the pool service and repair industry. It's developed for our industry and only our industry. Pool Invoice is built with reoccurring billing in mind. You can print, email, text invoices, or even send via WhatsApp. You can add reoccurring or yearly charges, accept credits, and set up auto pay. You can even see when customers have seen the invoice. It even has a customer portal where they can log in and see, print, and pay invoices. It has all your customers' information on one page, so you don't need to search through hundreds of invoices looking for the one you need. Just go to the customer profile and it's all at your fingertips. Created specifically for the pool industry, Pool Invoice. Now available at PoolInvoice.com. Blu-ray XL is the power of minerals working for you. Reduce your overall chemical cost and labor up to 50% guaranteed. Whether you have 20 accounts or 20,000, Blu-ray XL's direct pricing and free shipping to the pool trade have you covered. Improving pool professionals' profit and work-life balance is what they do. Blu-ray XL, the real mineral purifier. Visit them at BluRayXL.com. Blu-ray all day. Aquastar's new pipeline cartridge filters, available in two sizes, deliver top-notch hydraulic efficiency along with best-in-class filtration performance, approaching that of DE filters. Uniquely designed, open pleat spacing means 100% of the media square footage is usable. And these claims are backed by NSF test results. Designed with the pros' time and comfort in mind, the patented double-locking system improves safety and ease of access, making filter cleaners faster than ever before. Available now. Ask your supplier for pipeline filters today. 
Natural Chemistry, a leader in specialty water care solutions for over 30 years, is proud to provide products that make pool service easier than ever before. Its unique enzyme formulations in Pro Series Pro Blend improve efficiency of your pool program while reducing frequency of filter cleaning and scum lines. Natural Chemistry is also well known for its wide variety of phosphate removal solutions that include a non-clouding formula in phosphory and extremely high range removal with Pro Series Foss Remove or Foss Free Max. Save time, save money, save work with Pro Series products. Stop sacrificing durability or efficiency with the help of Raypack's new Avia HD models that utilize NYTEC, their exclusive industry-first technology. NYTEC Heat Exchanger Technology is Raypack's latest solution to superior strength and maximum efficiency when it comes to residential pool heating. With 900% more nickel compared to Cooper Nickel in critical surfaces, NYTEC creates an ideal surface to protect against scale formation and erosion without compromising on Avia's 84% thermal efficiency. Learn more at raypack.com slash nitech. Welcome back, everybody, to the Pool Nation Live podcast. I am your host, Nathan King. <laughs> I was going to say, he's still in the show here. I, I got a lot older. Is, Since the break? Uh, is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's calling you old. That's twice in oh, this sorry, podcast. Sorry. I just want to point that right, out. Right, that was, that was That's twice he's called you old. That sorry. Was, that was uncalled. I, I'll pay you later, Nathan. Shots fired. You want to go? It's not my turn, but I'll take one. There you go. Go for it. Because I like to have a turn. How important is emotional intelligence in exercising influence and persuasion? Because Nathan referenced EQ earlier, so Mm -hmm. he clearly lives with you. So how important is that? Yeah, he's using the lingo. I love it. I know. Oh, I think it's highly important. I wouldn't say it's critical. I think it's highly important. There's people that come to our minds all the time that are very just smart and intellectual and intelligent. And unfortunately, don't have high emotional intelligence. I think about Steve Jobs, right? Losing his actual company because of low EQ capability. Right. I think he's a perfect example. And when you think about influence and persuasion to get people to move in a direction to innovate, to create, you need high emotional intelligence. That means you have to be able to empathize with other people. I say that word empathy a lot, but that's part of emotional intelligence. High emotional intelligence requires you to have empathy. It requires you to be able to build those relationships. It also effective communication. I I say that a lot because a lot of people think effective communication is all about just talking. When you think about communication, it's all about having an impact, influencing people to actually take the actions you want them to take. So emotional intelligence requires you to have high effective communication skills. So I would say it's probably one of the most important things you can do. But again, it's a skill you can learn. IQ comes naturally to you. You're born with a high IQ, but emotional intelligence, you can actually develop that over time your entire life. So don't you find that people oftentimes toss in our world, Mm -hmm. there's buzzwords all the time, right? Like even in the HR world, oh, harassment, discrimination, blah, blah, blah. There's all these buzzwords. And then when you get into leadership, I feel like Emotional intelligence or EQ, a lot of times people toss that around and they really don't usually understand what that really is. And so really not understanding what it is can impact when they don't understand. That's the gap that they could be experiencing in something like this. If they don't have it, don't know what it is, don't know how to get it, then that could be that could cause a gap in something like this influencing and persuasion piece. Correct. I call it a career stopper. Actually, when you think about it, if you don't have emotional intelligence and you can't really use those skills to build those trust, then it really is a career stopper at the end of the day, which you should know about getting into the crow world um, <laughs> in the future because you're going to be paying for our retirement. So. Sure. So wait, I have a question. You said effective communication. That's like more than just talking, though, right? You can communicate effectively just by listening. So be an effective listener, I guess, is the word. So I would say that you actually hearing is with the function of the ear. When you actually want to actively listen, which we talk about a lot, we train people think, oh, I already know this, but actively listening is actually the connection between the ear and the brain. And if you're an emotional trigger at that point in time, you have these emotions that you hear emotions trump logic all the time, right? (laughs) Don't you hear that all the time? All the time. Right. And so what it takes is this emotional intelligence to understand that emotional trigger is a sign that your body's telling you that you are not thinking logically, that you are reacting out of emotion. So think about those body language, those body signs you get whenever you're nervous. Say your presentations, Nathan, what are some body signals that you have that come up that tell you I'm emotionally triggered in that moment? 
I just want to like trip and fall. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> like just go unconscious and forget it happened. Yeah. Because what's your body telling you? What are some of the body signals? Because like you get really tense. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's like hard to breathe. You feel like you're getting sweaty and like flushed and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Can you guys relate with that when you get really yeah. nervous? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or if you Zach get really angry. You all of Zach, them. yeah. <laughs> I was going to say. 2,000 of them. Yeah. Are you bell. feeling those right now, Zach? Or are you good? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good right now. Oh. Take it. Well, when you think about it, emotional intelligence is all about the fact that your brain is actually not functioning because it's not getting to the logical side. So everything within your body is giving these signals. And so when you start to feel emotionally triggered, you get the sweat palms or talk too fast or feeling anxious or anxiety, your brain's not working. So I can give you guys a couple tools on how to get your brain to work in an emotional intelligence when you think about influencing. Are you guys interested? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that possible? Right. Yeah, it's possible. <laughs> okay, so. it okay. like, now I'm really interested. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. Zach, you get Zach, permission yeah, yeah. to write this down. This is where you need to take your notes. <laughs> Use the um, terminology of access to actually know that you're accessing your emotions. So A stands for autonomy. You can be triggered by just feeling you have no autonomy, that you have somebody else who's micromanaging you. That would be an example of autonomy. A is for autonomy. Uh, C is for connection. If you're going to lose connection with somebody, for example, you're going to lose that sale. (laughs) So I'm going to lose that connection right now or Mm -hmm. certainty. Those two things can give you an emotional trigger. And the next thing is equity. So A, autonomy. C, connection. C, certainty, and E, equity. So if you think that something's not fair, right? So Mm -hmm. that's priced too high. That's not what I want to pay. It's a used car salesman situation. That's not fair. Why am I having to do this when that next person coming in will pay less? So any type of equity would give an emotional trigger or inequity. And then the last one is S for social standing, SS. So you think about hierarchy. So I know when my boss's boss calls me at 10 o'clock at night, Mm-hmm. I immediately go into an emotional trigger, right? Like, right, right. <laughs> I had one of those calls on the way here. Yeah, I was going to say. There's this unknown uncertainty. So it comes into play there and also the fact that you have hierarchy involved. So once you are emotionally triggered, any of those things, combination of them can actually give you an emotional trigger. And so in order to manage it, you have to label it first. Why am I feeling this emotion right now? And an example of equity for me is like someone cuts me off on the freeway. I'm like immediately my triggered. Spot. Right. I'm, I'm, like ears. I'm immediately triggered, wild. right? Yeah, yeah, a little, yeah bit. a little bit. And it's because I think, who do they think they are more important than me? But if I actually just reframe it and label, I'm feeling this emotion right now because I feel inequity is happening or I reframe it. Maybe that's a person rushing to the hospital, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. And because they're rushing to the hospital, in my mind, whether it's true or not, doesn't matter. I have just tapped in for my emotional trigger to my logical brain. And now I can cr- critically think. I can be informed. I have emotional intelligence. Isn't that gold, Zach? I yeah. said it too fast. Was that gold or what? <laughs> yeah, it is pure gold. It's honestly, as I get older, I catch myself doing that more. I used to be like very angry, like you said, like someone cuts you off. But I do find myself using that same exact example. I'm like, maybe they have something important that they've got to get to. And I'm immediately like over it. I am trying to figure out how I tie this into the whole getting a in truck. front of people thing. Like, yeah. Doing what's that? Oh, getting in front of public. Yeah. Yeah. But she was talking about the SS, right? And I start thinking about all the time you go on vacation, Zach. I would go on vacation and then I would get a call from a customer or a text and I would get triggered right off the bat. Like yeah. your emotions Which we go saw, right off the bat, John, right? Because when and, John was here, he was, and, he was stressed out because he's getting customer calls. Yeah. And it yeah. makes me think of John because John comes out and then, and John's a person that he wants to always fix everything right then yep. and there. He wants yep. everything to be right for the customer. Control. I can and so, to that. so he gets called. Calls and he's far away, right? So it, those calls and those texts trigger that. I'm hearing her talk about the acronym, and I'm thinking, how can I apply this to my children? I have. I know but you just were, don't I, tell I, him. I was going to say, <laughs> I know you had to be thinking some of that too. Because you're like, oh yeah, that's why they act like that because they got that inequity. And yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. it's real. It's real. Got to apply it to the children. Let's see here. Todd's pool service. What's going on, Todd? Big shout out to you out there. Todd was on our podcast that we did with Leanne for two hours and 10 minutes. He listened the entire two hours oh and God. 10 wow. minutes. Right. Wow. So, we had it, Leanne. That's Thank impressive. You. Big I shout know. out to you out there. Casey Carmichael, what's going on? Yo, Cabana Pool Service in the house. Let's see here. Customs Pools LLC is here. Big shout out to you as well. And Mr. Chris Galvan, what's going on here? Sounds 
Very interesting. So Chris, this is a class that is going to be epic. And that's why I sent you a message if you were going to be out here on March 1st, because it is influence and persuasion. And let me tell you, it is going to be gold. So Chris, if you can manage to make it out, my friend, I got a spot for you. Mm -hmm. Open invitation to you out there. So anyways, big shout out out there. It also goes by Manipulation and Trickery by Edgar, <laughs> Edgar de Jesus. But that's the, that's the non-preferred name. <laughs> that's the 2.0 version. Zach, yeah. now all of a sudden I'm taking shots. First of all, we had a little friendship going on here. My money's on him and all of a sudden shots fired over I in my direction. It. I love it. Right? Doreen, in the digital age, how has the landscape of influence and persuasion changed with all this social media and all this stuff? Dramatically, dramatically, for sure. You think about this short TikToks and Instagram messaging that you have to do within eight seconds or 10 seconds, right? That's all you got. I think that's something we just talked about earlier. I think it's about the power of storytelling. It's about websites that we have out there. How are we going to be able to influence somebody to stay on our website and not go somewhere else or on an app? So if your business is really relying on captivating your new customers through a website, Power of storytelling is going to be something they want to make sure that they get skilled at. It's not just about a bunch of text. It's images. It's making sure that you can captivate in that moment with a tagline. In order to captivate, that's the only way you can influence them to even consider you moving forward. Or they're going to find someone else who's going to be able to do that for him. You know, it's funny because when you think about the art of storytelling, you guys, especially Pool Nation podcasts have done that a lot, right? Like you guys have all told your stories. Every time you have somebody on, you want to hear their story. And it's that emotional connection that you're drawing through mm -hmm. hearing those stories. And we see a lot of advertising too now that even commercials, the best commercials are telling a story of right. some sort that actually get you to remember it and connect to it. And I think we underestimate how important storytelling actually is or how much it surrounds us without actually, like you were talking about images. When we were in the hotel industry together and we had you know, people on our team and certain people were in charge of bulletin boards and this, that, and the other. It's like we made sure there were pictures of all the employees at events and things like that. Like we were celebrating the employees. We had pictures on the bulletin boards. And they would sit there and just look at all these pictures all the time because that was their story. That was their story of their time with their coworkers. And that was their story of the time with the company and things like that. And we're always showcasing employees. Even now, we're always showcasing employees and their stories because the art of storytelling, it also brings other people in. Or if there's new people that you just hired, it connects them to the company because they see other people's stories and they want to have a story similar to that or they enjoy that story. So the stories are out there and around us. And again, I agree with 100% with what she's saying. If we don't have the art of storytelling, there's not that emotional connection anyway. And Zach, we talked about this with your business, right? As you're getting people in and now you've got this career trajectory that you're building for your employees. That's part of that story too, right? You're building that, you're telling that story. So I think if you break it down and look around you, there's stories everywhere. I just think we have to be mindful enough to recognize that's what that really is. And I think especially in that digital age, we got to be better at it. And it's about credibility, right? Mm -hmm. If we are telling the story. So think about not just your website, but how are you reacting on your social pages? If you are reacting hot headed without that emotional intelligence, that credibility that you have is lost, mm -hmm. right? So think about every post everything that you actually represent your company with, whether it be print, social media, and that's going to influence them to either stay with you or go somewhere else. It's just about your character coming out in every direction, not just images. And I know that speaks to you guys. Oh, I'm over here like taking it all in big time. It's interesting because if you really think about it, like you were saying, Leanne, it's all around us all the time. Mm -hmm. Like we're constantly, as we go through our lives, through our day, everyone's trying to influence us in some way or another, whether it's a billboard, whether it's a phone ad, a TV ad, a radio ad, a salesman, whatever. And I'm just curious, I guess it explains how now it's a shorter window that you have to influence someone because we're just being bombarded nonstop with it to where I'm becoming desensitized to it. Is that what, and it's just, you got to capture the quick moment. 
Yeah. Think about how much information is coming our direction from every direction, right? And literally on top of each other. You're in the middle of your Facebook and you're checking that. And then all of a sudden TikTok comes up and an Instagram post and a phone call rings and you got parents and kids in the background. So information is coming at us super fast from every direction. And that's why credibility is going to be key. Building relationships. Right? I'm telling you, it's all about yeah. establishing credibility, building really authentic relationships, not just surface relationships. It has to be authentic. You can't actually influence somebody unless they have felt that you're worthy to be listening to any further than that in that moment. Zach, I take a look at it, obviously, with my customers, and that was the case, right? You go and you create those true relationships. Think about all the relationships that I built, and you create that credibility, and then there's that connection there that's it's almost unbreakable. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you make a mistake. It doesn't matter if I walk into the backyard and the pool is green. Mm -hmm. They don't care. That's Edgar. It happened. It's no big deal. Or they call you and they say, hey, we had a little problem. Can you come and take care of it? It's a freaking green pool. But that bond is unbreakable. Right. There's a piece of loyalty that's built. In. Yeah. There's, 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 yeah. Yeah. And we talk about it all the time. And I mean, I'm pushing that around here about building that trust and that credibility. And then we have that leniency from our customers when we do make a mistake, because we will make a mistake at some yep. point or another. And it's like for you, uh, sorry, Zach, I know you're going to ask a question, but it just reminds you of the conversation that we were having the other day with one of your pool guys, right? And it happens where your techs create that relationship, that bond, they have the credibility with the tech. And then when you switch the tech, right, then it's a problem because now mm -hmm. this person has to start all over again. Right. They have to create the relationship, create the influence yep. all over in order yep. for that customer to be happy. Absolutely. Dorian, I want to ask what personal habits contribute to developing strong influence and persuasion skills? Oh my gosh, I think this has got to be like a, a mantra. You just have to be able to live it and breathe it every day. And I go back to those 13 behaviors of trust. And I think that's where I struggle with in this conversation. And there's so much good information that comes out of that training that we do for four hours usually. I know we're going to do two hours <laughs> right. with yours. It's all about having that dialogue around the 13 behaviors of trust. Because when you think about it, most people, one of the behaviors is talking straight and shooting, be honest, be transparent, be forthcoming. And the opposite of that is to lie or deceive someone. Now, if you really talk to most of the people, not people aren't going into a conversation to lie or deceive, but there's something <laughs> called a counterfeit kind of behavior. And the counterfeit behavior is, I'm just going to hoard this information and only tell people who need to know, who I think need to know. I'm not going to share it willingly. And so we have a counterfeit behavior that we're doing that's not talking straight, not being honest, not being forthcoming. So I always go back to the 13 behaviors of a high trust. How do I really establish high trust? And I look at the one that I'm strong at and I get really skilled at that. I'll give you an example. I always think of Tiger Woods because when I was young, he was like the best golfer, right? Tiger Woods was skilled and he was a master at his sport. His father was his coach and his father said to him, son, you have strength and that strength that really supersedes any competitor is that you have a real ability and talent for the long drive. So it takes you less time to get to the hole than most people do. But one of your biggest opportunities is the sand trap. It takes you at least three strokes to get out of the sand. Every single day, seven days a week, you are going to practice both of those skills, something that you're strong at and one area that you have development in. So my question to you guys is, what do you think, Nathan, he was required to practice more of? He had to practice one skill for one hour and another skill for two hours. Was he required to spend more time on the long drive or getting out of the sand for two hours? She asked you because she knows I know the answer. That's right. <laughs> I don't know the answer, but I want to take a guess after. It must right. be the long drive, right? I'm just right. kidding. Yeah. Wait, I, know, I, was, I was going to say <laughs> the long drive, too. <laughs> what? I'm no, know, but I want to know your reason okay, why. Right. I want to know your reason why. I'm not saying yes or no. I'm just saying what's your reason why. No, maybe so that he gets better at what he's actually good at, so that way he won't fall in the sand trap. He in the first is place. really smart, guys. He's my he son. He hangs out by with the you way. too much. He's he my hears son. I was, I was going to get that one wrong, Zach. So I'm glad you answered. <laughs> <laughs> but he got it right too. He's smart too. Most people say that they had to spend two hours at what they're not skilled at because that would mean that I have to practice more when I'm not really good at. Mm -hmm. The reality is, as Dad said, as a coach, you're going to need to spend two hours at what you are skilled at, your natural talent, your natural ability, because when you do that more freely. You're going to spend less time in the sand. However, son, you're going to be uh, spending your time in the uh, sand from time to time. So you better figure a way to get out before three strokes. Wise old man. 
So when you think about it, that's really what it is about influence and persuasion and how you can actually create the culture within yourself is to practice what you're great at in those 13 behaviors to become masterful at it. I say masterful purposely. And then also look at the one thing that you're not skilled at and get better at it each day. And if you just did two, one positive, one area of opportunity and practice that for three months and then took another two, think about how high trust culture you could have for your business, with your teams, with your customers. So that's what I would say would be my words of advice. And if we take it a step further into the business world and we talk about delegation, I'll work on the long drive, Edgar. I'm going to put you <laughs> in the same track. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Zach has a lot of presenting to do. I like Two it. hours a day. I like it. I like That's it. it. Yeah. It's funny how they're coming back around to your presentations, which means <laughs> right. we're going to put you through that session you and I, I talked I was going to say, about. I have a presentation yeah. skills class for you, Zach. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be he, fun. He keeps threatening. Every time he comes out, he's like, Leanne, I need to go to that class. Oh. I need to go to that class. And it, So I'm like, listen, it's a three-day commitment, my friend, right. whenever you're ready. And let me tell you, that class... Yeah. And again, I'm dying. Life changing. I'm dying to take this class. I know this class for all the pool pros that are going to take it. And I know already, just to give you a heads up, some leadership people that are already reaching out to me going, can we have our people go? Can we? I think I'm going to steal some time and I'm going to go down there and I'm going to take the class. And I tell everybody, this is probably going to be a life changing class for a lot of people. And I'm dying to sit down and take it. And I'm just not going to do anything and I'm going to take the class. Mm -hmm. But that presentations class is something that changed my life, my life the way it's something that I've taken and put into play in a lot of different things. It's yeah. not just about business. It's not just about what you do right. professionally, mm -hmm. but like even personally. And I keep telling Zach, that's a class that he needs to take. We, the problem is we need to put a class. Here's the challenge. We need to put the class together, but you can only do six people. Right. Yeah. That's no, like, oh, I got plans on how you can do more. Yeah, do you? I do. See, yeah. So when I first facilitated that class and I turned it over to Doreen when I brought her to the dark side of oh, HR yeah, was... and then I put her through that, it was a little bit grueling for you. She made me cry. Nathan. Your aunt made me cry. I don't think I remember it like that. Yeah, I but do. That's <laughs> really years. funny. I could have filmed it and saved it if I knew you were going to be Listen. coming along. But I gave it to her. It was a phenomenal class. It was fantastic. Yeah. And somehow she managed to take it and make it better and better. So she continues to evolve Iterate. that class mm -hmm. and make it better and better. So it is amazing. But three day class. So that's a whole nother topic. Oh, my gosh. That was my favorite. <laughs> You guys scare me with it because you're like, it's grueling. It's three days. It's I like imagine like getting on a bus with a hood over my head <laughs> to some like hotel and 5 a.m. buckets of water on me, <laughs> strobe lights. No, it's no. actually it's one of those classes. And again, it's unfortunately, it's a three day commitment, but it's one of those classes that you have the pleasure as a facilitator to see true changes in behavior and people's ability to stand up and present. Yeah. And we had some, when we were in the hotel industry, we had people that thought they'd never use it. And then they'd come back and they'd say, oh my God, I got called up at the convention center just to talk to this group of travel agents. And I wasn't expecting it. And I crushed it because I went through your class and otherwise I would have probably just cowered and cried. But because they went through the class, they had the skills to get up and present ad hoc, last minute, or prepared. So it really is life-changing. Well, and, and you can use it with your customers. And yeah. You can oh. use it in your business. You can I, use we, it. I use it everywhere. It's all yeah. about yeah. 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 yeah, I will tell you, I remember the reason Leanne made me cry, Nathan, was because <laughs> I was killing the class, right, for two solid days. In my third presentation, she said to everybody around the table, when she asked for help, when I'm she asked for volunteers, <laughs> when she wants anything from you, not one of you, you speak Spanish, you're at the fawn, you don't say anything, don't get out of your seat. Literally, nobody played with me in the sandbox. And I was so upset. None um, of the participants none would of participate. They I didn't know participate. that she had <laughs> set me up that way. And I walked out of the class. I was like, that's never going to happen in real world again. That was not a real world scenario. About two, I would say probably two years later, I came out of a class that was exactly like that. No. A thousand percent. And I used every trick and trade that I got out of that class and I made them work. And I came to Leanne and I remember saying to her too, facilitating the class, I got a guy in here with 103 and does. There is no way I can solve that problem this weekend. And uh -huh. she said, you and what's, can. A, what's an anda? An anda is a filler and oh. a transition <laughs> word Thank combined, you. Thank you. right? Uh, and uh, so three minute presentation, 103 and us. That is a painful presentation. And the next day, putting those skill sets into action, he had literally 32. And by day three, he had none and he got a standing ovation. 
See? And it was a 15 minute presentation. So you can that, exactly. to the point, <laughs> it is probably a grueling class in the sense that it's just a lot. However, you'll have the most growth you'll have in your entire career. Yeah, yeah I yeah, agree. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that statement. It is. And it I, is. I wanted to add and... Uh, 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 and, uh, <laughs> I saw that coming a mile away, guys. Did it. you? Yeah. I was actually waiting to see no. what he had to. Uh, <laughs> okay, so coming. I will ask a question. All right. So, Doreen, how does a leader's ability to influence and persuade actually impact the company itself, whether it's their company, the company they work for, the company they're building? How does that ability actually have impact? Both negative if they can't, positive if they can. It has a direct correlation on an outcome of your results, whether that be a desired result or an undesired result. (laughs) I want you to think about all the excuses we give about why we can't achieve some sort of result, whether it be personal or professional. So I want to lose 10 pounds. I can say that till I'm blue in the face. I want to lose 10 pounds or I want to get this particular sales goal for the year. And I'm going to live in this space of victim cycle behavior, right? I'm just going to wait and see. I'm sure I'll lose those 10 pounds by next Christmas. But if I don't change my diet, I don't put a plan out there and in place. I'm not going to lose those 10 pounds. And by the way, you have to step back and look at the actual reality, which is not an easy step, right? That's the most uncomfortable, vulnerable space is to get on that scale and look down and realize it wasn't 10 pounds. It was like like 45, (laughs) right? Mm -hmm. So you have to have a clear understanding of the results you want to achieve, not just the vision and mission statement, but what are the results? What are the metrics that I want to make sure I achieve? And I'm going to watch those all year long. Influence and persuasion allows you to build a customer base. It allows you to build connections. Loyalty you talked about, it's critical, right? It's also, you have to be a change leader. Your businesses are changing. Innovations required something new that you did this year versus what you did pre-pandemic. If you're not willing to be innovative and creative and influence new customer bases coming in, then you're not going to get the results that you want. I love that too, because we were just having a discussion with a bunch of leaders about be flexible and make sure that we're changing with the way things are changing. And Zach and I were, he laughed because I have a crystal ball. So when we were going through the great resignation and I was talking him through it and and I swear he was going to start cutting his wrist, but I told him, I said, this too will come to an end, right? You have to, first of all, adjust your hiring practices, your salary ranges, because we were all fighting for salaries doing all these different things. I said, and then eventually it's going to slow down and it's going to normalize. It won't go back to where it was, but it'll normalize and things like that. And he's had to adjust the way he's done his business, but anticipating those needs and being willing to adjust. If we stay the same, then we don't win in the end because you can't accomplish those goals, especially when the environment around you is changing and you're staying the same. And we've seen that with the different companies that we've worked for. Right. Especially you being at Hilton as many years as you have. Yeah. How many changes did you see that company go through? Too many to count. Right? Yeah. And we were like thrust in the middle of them every single time. And if you're not flexible and and willing to build a strategy and ready to change, it's not going to work. Yeah. And even in this market that we're in, especially for us in the pool industry, it's a changing market, right? You had COVID. Mm Mm-hmm. All time highs. Right. The industry Builders completely were going crazy, exploded. Right? Oh my then you had the freeze. There was a shortage of products. Mm-hmm. You could do all that. Supply chain issues. We're not talking about supply chain issues. <laughs> now all that's come to a stop. So it's like, how do you reinvent yourself? How do you yeah. change? How do you use influence? We see a lot Stay more relevant. people trying to be influencers online where before they didn't have to be in front of the camera. They could just post the jobs that they did in yeah. the amazing pools. That doesn't work anymore. Right. Now they're having to flip the camera around and become the influencers and be somebody of credibility and create those relationships. So that kind of brings business. And so if they don't change and they don't flip that phone around, they're not going to get the desired result. I think it's important to note, too, you have to be very versatile working with other people, different personality types. And you asked me earlier, what was my greatest failure when it came to influencing my first 13 years parenting Nathan was my failure, right? <laughs> and I think I don't know, it looks because, like it came out pretty good. I think it's because I always say I parented him wrong for the first 13 years because I was parenting him the way that I perceive the world, the way that I interact with the world. And come to find out, he's complete opposite of me. So the way he approaches any projects, anything with school, doing it my way was uncomfortable doing it his way. Don't you see Nathan? Come on, I'm putting you on the spot here. But once I let go of the reins at the age of 13, I started letting you actually slowly but surely do things your way where you had more autonomy. Was that something that benefited you or not? I think so. 
I don't really remember. It definitely was. I don't remember anything like pre-13, if I'm being honest. <laughs> I didn't but... damage you too much. We won't be that well, no, you, you, you took puberty. all my memory. <laughs> oh, I, took all your memory. <laughs> I guess the best way to do this is if you guys have a pen, I'm going to ask you to take a pen out. Does anybody do me a favor and sign your name like you always would. Zach, go ahead and sign your name like you always would. I'm going to do that right now. Everybody listening, do this. Sign your name. Sign your okay. name. And while like we're you, doing that, I'm going to point out, Nathan, you had a chance to crack on her parenting okay. and you missed okay. it. I didn't want to be yelled at when I go. Oh, okay, <laughs> good. Oh, we'll see. Smart boy again. Smart boy. Okay, so now that you've done that, Zach, so how did that feel? You signed your name. How did it feel just now? Natural, very comfortable, right? Now, everybody, yeah. go ahead and sign your name with your opposite hand. Oh, I knew that was coming. Oh, man. This hand is useless. Oh, jeez. Your left handed. Sign your I name. I am. That yeah, means I'm in my cool. right mind. If with you're left handed, too. you're in your right mind. There you go. That, <laughs> that's, that's a common fact. I got a whole lot well, of. Wait a minute. Hold on. All right, Edgar, how did that feel that's compared to the first one? Oh, completely uncomfortable. Like, right. it's like, so uncomfortable. Like, right. I lacked the confidence. In it's the, almost like I didn't know how to write at yeah. all. Right. So, what did you have to do differently <laughs> the second time, Leanne? I had to really think about it. You had to think? Was it and uncomfortable? Practice. Control. I had to control where my hand was going and think about my next Every move. Every stroke, right? How yeah. about you, Zach? Anything you felt the second time versus the first? It, yeah, it felt very forced, a very. Very thought out. Did you feel like you had to work harder? Oh, yeah. yeah. Put like, more effort. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, Which way does the end go again? I had to think about how to write the letters before <laughs> I just sign it. And right. I'm like, how do you write a J? How do you, you know? <laughs> so that goes to the same sense of learning any new skill. It feels really uncomfortable at first. It feels awkward. It feels forced. And if you had to go through your job doing that uncomfortable thing all the time, you're going to have to work too hard. So the point of that is with influence and persuasion, just like any other skill, you have to practice it and get more comfortable. And the more comfortable you get, the more skilled you get, the more skilled you get. We have capability to write with both hands. How comfortable are we at doing that? So any skill is going to require practice and precision. That is awesome. Hey, guys, let's do this. We're getting towards the end of the podcast. Believe it or not, we've been talking for almost two hours. <laughs> Holy it's cow. Almost two That's, hours, but I am engrossed. Let's do this. Zach, I think I want to change things up a little bit because I do have one more question that I want to answer. So when we ask. come back, I'm sorry, that I want to ask. <laughs> when we come back, we'll ask her that question and then we'll jump right into your final thoughts. So everybody, we'll be right back. The Hyper Pole from Ultimate Pool Tools is a pool care pole designed by pool professionals for pool professionals, featuring precision crafted carbon fiber and stainless steel construction. Go to ultimatepooltools.com or Instagram at Ultimate Pool Tools. Pool pros have specific needs when it comes to general liability insurance. The SPPA program has you covered. With three tailored and customizable general liability options, SPPA makes it easy for pool pros to feel secure. Find out more and get covered at the SPPA.com. Now available, Pool Invoice. Pool Invoice is a pool billing software created specifically for the pool service and repair industry. It's developed for our industry and only our industry. Pool Invoice is built with reoccurring billing in mind. You can print, email, text invoices, or even send via WhatsApp. You can add reoccurring or yearly charges, accept credits, and set up auto pay. You can even see when customers have seen the invoice. It even has a customer portal where they can log in and see, print, and pay invoices. It has all your customers' information on one page, so you don't need to search through hundreds of invoices looking for the one you need. Just go to the customer profile and it's all at your fingertips. Created specifically for the pool industry, Pool Invoice. Now available at PoolInvoice.com. Blu-ray XL is the power of minerals working for you. Reduce your overall chemical costs and labor up to 50% guaranteed. Whether you have 20 accounts or 20,000, Blu-ray XL's direct pricing and free shipping to the pool trade have you covered. Improving pool professionals' profit and work-life balance is what they do. Blu-ray XL, the real mineral purifier. Visit them at BluRayXL.com. Blu-ray all day. <laughs> 
Aquastar's new pipeline cartridge filters, available in two sizes, deliver top-notch hydraulic efficiency along with best-in-class filtration performance, approaching that of DE filters. Uniquely designed, open pleat spacing means 100% of the media square footage is usable. And these claims are backed by NSF test results. Designed with the pro's time and comfort in mind, the patented double-locking system improves safety and ease of access, making filter cleaners faster than ever before. Available now. Ask your supplier for pipeline filters today. Natural Chemistry, a leader in specialty water care solutions for over 30 years, is proud to provide products that make pool service easier than ever before. Its unique enzyme formulations in Pro Series Pro Blend improve efficiency of your pool program while reducing frequency of filter cleaning and scum lines. Natural Chemistry is also well known for its wide variety of phosphate removal solutions that include a non-clouding formula in phosphory and extremely high range removal with Pro Series Series Foss Remove or Foss Free Max. Save time, save money, save work with Pro Series products. Stop sacrificing durability or efficiency with the help of Raypack's new Avia HD models that utilize NITEC, their exclusive industry-first technology. NITEC Heat Exchanger Technology is Raypack's latest solution to superior strength and maximum efficiency when it comes to residential pool heating. With 900% more nickel compared to Cooper Nickel in critical surfaces, NITEC creates an ideal surface to protect against scale formation and erosion without compromising on Avia's 84% thermal efficiency. Learn more at raypack.com slash nitech. Welcome back, everybody, to the Pool Nation live podcast. Today we're talking to Nathan, Doreen, Leehan, Zach. How are you doing over there, Zach? Does it feel weird being over there in Houston all by yourself? Actually, after the last few days, it, it feels really strange. Yeah? Zach, I want you to hold up that notepad I just yeah, saw. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Spider nose. <laughs> Look at that. Wait, that's only one. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, come yeah. on, there's got to be more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew it. I bet his hand hurts. It actually <laughs> does. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, I know. Uh, Zach, I want you to know that you can take that class, right? You know that, right? You say that, but you're going to have me working. <laughs> so I'm trying to get it all while I can. Uh, Sounds like he knows you. We're all going to take this class. We're going to be like, we're not available until this class is over. <laughs> and we have plenty of time for the class, right? Yeah. It's going yeah, to be. A, we do. Yeah. We, we do. do. All yeah, right. absolutely do. Yeah. So but good. really engrossing discussion will take place in that class. So I won't be doing all the talking. The good thing is I'm going to actually give an opportunity for the group to tell us what they're doing today to actually influence and persuade what they already do. And we're going to gather that information so we can see what gaps we can close. And then we're going to have some opportunities for people to actually do talking within small groups. So they're not just listening to me. They're going to be talking within each group, learning the content together. And I think that's what's going to be where the magic really happens. We'll be guiding the conversation, giving them visuals, giving them handouts to take away, and then an action plan to put into action. So... I will have okay. three people there. Feel free to pick on them as much as you want to. <laughs> you know, I do that. Let me tell you, they'll say, Doreen, yes. where do I sit in your class where you don't pick on me? And I'm like, you can't find a place. Well, now, I'll now, I'm gonna find you. You. now I'm going to pick on you. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm there. I have one more question. What is one key takeaway you'd like listeners to remember about what we've talked about, leadership, influence, and persuasion? One key takeaway. That's tough. I would just say it starts with you. In order to influence and persuade, if I haven't gotten across, earning and establishing your credibility to burn, uh, to build that credibility for yourself, that's key. If you don't take that step, you're just going to not be able to influence and persuade to get the results you want. But that's a journey over time to do that. It's not just a one and done conversation. So being flexible, adaptable, not dying on the hill you want to die on, making sure that you have iteration to your what you're trying to accomplish. I think always focusing on the target too. If you're going to actually get the target you want, you have to hit the target. That's, yeah, know what it is first, right? A lot of times people yeah. don't know what their actual oh target God, is. Yeah. I know it is. There's a <laughs> whole exercise. My Mary Poppins exercise. is yeah. coming out right now because that's a whole activity I can put yep. you through that it would be life-changing again. <laughs> and it's funny because it's what Zach loves to talk about this, right? Like you have to have a plan and he, he talks about it. Without a plan is like, a pilot not putting anything into the instruments and just flying. Where's the plane going to go? Where are you going? You don't know. But I think yeah, one of the biggest we need things to see that that, we need, the is people that need to see that. you really have to know your target. You really have to have a clear pinpoint of where you're going to. The other thing that I really like that you talked about is it's a journey. And I think a lot of people tend to, at least in this day and age, 
want to get to everything very quick. They want it to come very quick. And one of the things that we've learned with Pool Nation, even though we've been very fortunate, right? We've been very fortunate. We've been very lucky to get to where we are in a as short quick in a short amount of right. time. But it has been a journey and we sit and we talk about it. And when we really talked and we said, here's the plans that we want to do for the next 10 years. At that point, we can stop and look back and see what changes we've made, what we've done. And a lot of people look at us and go, My, man, you guys are crazy, like 10 years. But the one clear thing in understanding is that it is a journey. And so unless you're willing to put in the time, unless you're mm-hmm. willing to work on it every day and to mm-hmm. work hard, you're never going to reach that point. So that's yeah. why they say it's a marathon, not a sprint. Right. But you also have to celebrate the milestones, right? Yes. You have to be able to say, here's our target. We're not there yet, but we have made this progression to get there and celebrate those in order to actually continue the momentum to move forward to the target you're trying to achieve at the end of the day. So it may be a long journey, but you got to stop, recognize those. Listen, you also have to look back and say, we're not quite there. And so what more do we need to do? So what else can I do is the mantra I always say until you hit the target. And then when you don't hit those or you do things that you fail, you move on, right? Mm -hmm. You have to be able to adapt and and move on. Cool Tech USA, look through your goals because they are only stepping stones in the final product of your business if you truly want to succeed. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Oh, my God. That was beautifully it's, it's said. It's perfectly wrapped up yeah, in a nice little right? I always was, say uh, that. We should hire this guy. <laughs> yeah. Cool Tech USA, that was like gold yeah, right there yeah, towards the end of the podcast. Up. Absolutely. Yep, you killed it there, brother. Yeah, you sure did. Yep. So, Mr. Zacharias, let me get some final thoughts. So now that you've turned the spotlight on me, I'm immediately thinking access. Why am I feeling this way? (laughs) (laughs) Guys, I can't breathe. (laughs) I can't breathe. My heart tracing. No, in all seriousness, this isn't a skill that's not just for someone that is leading people. And this is my takeaway. This directly impacts your ability to build relationships with your customers and help create relationships between your brand and them. And to me, when I look at that, like that has tremendous value because people will want to stay with you longer. You'll retain your customers. You'll retain your team. They'll spend more with you and ultimately trust you and refer you. So I just want to encourage anyone who wants to put more tools in their tool bag or in their professional tool bag, go to this class. Like we're putting this together It's a lot of work for everyone involved. Show up, be ready to learn. And it doesn't matter whether you're a business owner, you're an employee, or even a parent. Because for me, what I'm finding is most of what I'm learning in business translates into my household, whether that's finances, whether that's leadership, whether that's accountability, it all correlates. And this class will help you. And so I'm definitely looking forward to this. And like I said, I'll have some of my team there. So please get them, engage them. They love that stuff. I like to hear what they come up with. So that'll be really fun. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I did have one final question for today. And back when you were talking about, you asked a question about what's the first question that a police officer asks you when they get pulled over. And everyone was hesitant, but I noticed, Edgar, you jumped right in. (laughs) Yeah. Answer. Out of and that. I'm trying to figure out. He's very familiar. Here's why is because when I get pulled over, I know when I get pulled over and I'll tell you, I was driving to Oklahoma to see Brianna and my GPS was telling me to get off and take the frontage road. And I did. And then it put me right back on right at the end of the traffic. And I'm like, that's bizarre. So all of a sudden there's all this traffic. My truck is white. I see a construction truck go over and go over the dirt road. White construction truck. And goes over. And so I figured, I don't want to be here. I'm going to follow that construction truck. My truck is white. (laughs) We look the same. (laughs) Did it work? I guess not because you got pulled over. Well, listen to this. So I was talking to Alicia Stevens from Biolab about some training that we were doing. And I'm on speakerphone and I'm driving and I go, Alicia, if I hang up, it's because I'm going to jail. I'm doing something (laughs) illegal. And I went like that, went right over the hill. And as soon as I came back and I looked up, I was lit up by a cop. (laughs) Of course. And the cop pulled me over. And the very first question is, do you know why I pulled you over? And I said, I absolutely know why you pulled me over. I take full responsibility. He said, he almost (laughs) tried to trick me. He did. He tried to give you some answers there. He goes, oh, so you weren't in a hurry? And I go, no. 
I take full responsibility. I did what I did. I know what I did. Are you sure? Is, is everything okay? Is there not in an emergency? And that's when I was like, hey, <laughs> like, why are you continuing to ask? And I said, you know what? I take responsibility and I take all accountability for it. And then he turned to me and he goes, you know what? I'm just going to give you a warning because you've been so honest with me. <laughs> you've been so honest with right. me that I am just going to let you go. And he let me go. That's establishing credibility right there. Yeah. I've learned a lot. But I, oh need get a, I need to get a white truck. Yeah, we, need, we need to be careful what we're teaching, Nathan, not uh, how to get out of a ticket, Nathan. So let me get your final thoughts, Leanne. Okay, so this was going to be difficult for me because I thought, I don't know what I would say for my final thoughts, but I'm just going to share my experience for this podcast. I can't tell you how much fun it's been having Nathan here because... Doreen wasn't convinced that he'd be an active participant. He's been amazing. So clearly we found a skill set that Nathan has. I think he's having a ball. I'm not surprised if people's minds are blowing out there on the content that Doreen goes through because I've not experienced any class that she's taught both with me in our past life and in our current <laughs> life that people haven't walked out and went, oh my God. Have you been in a class with Doreen? She's amazing. Oh my God, I learned so much. I can't wait to go back and apply this. And because they just rave about her, I think she's like this secret weapon that we've been able to, or by we, I mean me, have been able to drag along <laughs> with me everywhere I go because she is amazing at what she does. And I was explaining to Zach over the weekend, I said, she is truly a master in her craft. And, and I don't get to spend enough time with her. And when I do get to spend time with her, I can sit back and relish in the fact that she really is. She's a master at, at what she does. And everybody that gets to experience that with her walks away the better for it. So I'm excited. My final thoughts are I'm just really excited about being at Heritage and going through the different boot camp options that we have available there. And I think Everyone that goes there is just going to be amazed at what they're going to walk away with. And it's just going to be so much value added. So I'm excited about that. And I'm, I'm excited that you were able to convince her to come here. Because this That's is not awesome. my comfort, not <laughs> classrooms, my comfort zone. Podcasts, not so much. But you guys made me comfortable. So I thank there you for you that. Mm -hmm. And I will just say the work that you guys are doing at Pool Nation to actually focus on training and education is my love language. So thank you <laughs> very much. That is awesome. We normally don't do this. You got any final thoughts? I think so, actually. Which, by the way, I just want one thing to be clear, Let Zach. Let it go, for sure. There's no... So he gets his skill from his uncle. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. The talking on There's no, no blackmail no going on either. Right yeah. So. Of course. I don't know how many people this applies to, but I know when I started doing like presentations and trying to get better at like leadership and persuasion and stuff, it was scary because I thought there's no way I could do that. But I think if you just believe in yourself, put yourself out there, and encourage yourself to like actually try to do something new like at this class on March 1st and 2nd. I think you will actually learn something. That's awesome. So I do try it. Do That's try awesome. It. It's and getting out of that comfort zone. Yeah, you exactly. Know? Yeah. It's funny it's hard, because but... the most successful people in the world yeah. are risk takers. Yeah, right? exactly. And yeah. that's where it starts. Yeah. The magic happens outside of your comfort zone. <laughs> yeah, it, does. it, it yeah. absolutely does. It does. And I can promise everybody that's listening, everybody that is attending this class, trust me, it's going to be a life-changing, it's going to be a game-changing class. So we don't know when we're going to have the next opportunity to have Doreen because she's so busy and she's got full-time jobs, she's got families. We lucked out, that's here in Dallas, that we're going to be able to have you here. So anybody that can attend come out and take the class. It's going to be awesome. And we'll have Zach telling jokes at the end of the thing. He's going to do stand up for about five minutes. <laughs> Sounds yeah, good. Out of the comfort zone. Out of the comfort yeah, zone. I believe it's you. going to be uncomfortable for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I want everybody to know, believe it or not, we've been talking for an hour and 53 minutes. So okay. anyways, it seems like it was 20 minutes. Everybody, hope you have a great night. And we promise that we are going back to our regular schedule for the podcast, right? So people don't get sick of a sack. Uh, we will be taking... Taking next Friday off of the podcast because we've recorded quite a couple podcasts. So we will not be live next Friday, but you can catch us on Wednesday on the Instagram Live. We'll see everybody then. Have a great night. Thanks, Spider. Good night. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Pool Nation podcast, a member of the Pool Nation family. You can listen to us live every Friday here at 9 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Central, and 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. 
You can find us at Pool Nation or PoolNationPodcast.com, on Facebook or on Instagram at Pool.Nation. And to find more info about Pool Invoice, the billing software built specifically for the pool industry, go to PoolInvoice.com. Before you go, this is what the pool industry has been waiting for, PoolManUniversity.com. It's the first platform dedicated to learning the swimming pool service and repair industry, a pool service community where you can connect and find videos on business, service, water chemistry, and repairs. See you there at PoolManUniversity.com. 